Hi, my name is Rachel Hammersley and I'm a Professor of Intellectual History at Newcastle University. Today I'm going to talk to you about the consequences of the English Civil War. When thinking about consequences, it's important that we separate out those of the Civil War itself, which would include the events of the 1650s, from the longer term consequences of the period as a whole. On the face of it, it might look as though the immediate consequences of the Civil War were huge, while the longer term effects were more modest. But I would argue that both were significant and that the Civil War changed England forever. In the short term, the execution of the king turned England from a monarchy, a country with a king or queen, into a republic, a country without a monarch. People couldn't agree on how that republic should be organised and throughout the 1650s different systems were tried. The death of the king also had consequences for culture and society. Images of the king's head had to be removed from the royal seal, pictured here, from coins and even from tavern signs. And as you can see in the case of the seal, the king's head was replaced by Parliament sitting in session. The religious implications of the change were also immense. The relationship between the king and God, that was central to the divine right of kings, was challenged by the regicide, the killing of the king. At the same time, leading parliamentarians, including this man, Oliver Cromwell, believed that their victory in the civil wars was proof that God favoured them. During the 1650s, the Church of England was less powerful and radical religious groups, including Baptists and later Quakers, became more influential. The economic and social costs of war were also significant in terms of the loss of life and particularly the lives of young men and the disruption to trade. The restoration of Charles II in May 1660 is often seen as marking a return to normality. But it would be wrong to think that everything went back to how it was before. The regicide changed both how people viewed the monarch and how monarchs felt they could act. The threat of a repeat of 1649 loomed over them, ensuring that absolutist government where the monarch has absolute power, never took hold. And instead, 18th century Britain enjoyed a reputation as a land of liberty. The 1640s and 50s were seen as radical due to the introduction of new ideas with the protection of individual rights put forward by the levellers and limited parliaments living on. The new religious groups that had developed during this period also survived the Restoration. Charles II recognised this in his promise in the Declaration of Breda of 1660 that nobody shall be disquieted or called in question for differences of opinion in matters of religion, though in practice he was not quite so tolerant. Ultimately, the English Revolution of 1640 to 1660 was a source of inspiration for the American and French revolutions of the late 18th century. Later revolutionaries both recognised what had happened in England in the 1640s and 50s as being a revolution and drew on the writings and practices of those times in their own campaigns. <laughs>